What's up guys, Boss here and I'm back with another YouTube video and this time we're going to be running the best free to play hog deck in the whole game right now. It's currently better than 2.6, it's just been used like a ton right now. I found the deck out actually by Vulcan guys, I think he was the original creator of the deck. But I'm going to be playing it right now today too. So it has the Hog. Valkyrie's just so good right now after the splash like buff it got. Um, and then it has the Musketeer in it. Bats, Snowball, Skeletons like all for cycle. Snowball for pushback. And then of course you have the Earthquake as your like main uh, counter to like buildings you play. So you can get the Hog to the tower or maybe the Mortar to the tower. And Mortar's like a secondary win condition. It can also be used on defense. So I'm 8 on a GC right now. I uh, can't play it on ladder, unfortunately, because I don't have a maxed Earthquake or a maxed Hog Rider. So yeah, pl I'll play it in a GC, um, but hopefully I can give you guys some like tips on how to play the deck. I personally just, I love the deck. It's really fun to play and the cycle's so quick. And as I said, guys, it's, let me go back to the deck real quick. Uh, it's 100% free to play because there's not a single legendary in the deck. There's not a single epic in the whole deck. It's all commons and rares, which like should be easy for you guys to like max. Also, like most of the cards in the deck have been out for a while. The only card in the whole deck that you might not have high levels is the Earthquake. But honestly, if you have a level 12 Earthquake, that's typically in most cases um, fine. It's like the same aspect. It still slows down uh, troops and stuff, I think, by like... 30 it's like 30 percent or maybe 35 or something um but yeah um any kind of building deck you verse uh is just so much easier thanks to the earthquake even the goblin cage which is used a lot right now the earthquake gets value against that even though the brawler spawns out because it often can get your hog to the tower okay so with this starting hand here guys we can go ahead and play a mortar at the bridge i like going with a mortar first play typically it's not too aggressive or anything like that, and it forces out response. So it looks like he's running cannon cards, so my guess would be that this is probably... Um, well, there's like a couple different things, like maybe it's a golem deck. Um, it could be a graveyard deck. Okay, so Dark Prince, so it's looking like, if I had to guess, a golem deck, but I might be wrong, guys. Go okay, so actually, yeah, it's something else, because I don't think the Goblin Cage... Uh, Dark Prince cannon cart would all be used in a golem deck. So that Valkyrie is going to stop the Dark Prince and also completely stop the Brawler as well. Like, look at that, guys. The Valkyrie just has so much HP. Let's go with another Mortar here. He might go in with another cannon cart, which is fine, guys. Like, we can just let him do that. No, he actually goes with an Ewis, so I'm still, guys, not uh, entirely sure what he's running. There's a chance it might be a golem deck. I think I've seen a uh, golem Ewis deck going around, and this might be what he's running. There's a chance. Um, or it could be some, like, I don't know, maybe a graveyard deck. I'm really not sure. We'll have to kind of just wait. So he goes with a Dark Prince. That hog should get, uh, no, it actually will not because he goes in with a Goblin uh, Cage. So we can just go ahead and play a Musketeer Other Lane, play a Valkyrie. And it's actually a good thing I played a Musketeer Other Lane because he decided to go in with a Cannon Cart. So we should um, be able to completely stop everything. That's here just to clean up the Dark Prince. So what's bad is, is we haven't really gotten any significant damage yet. Um, and typically, if you are versing a Golem deck or Heavy deck, you do want to get most of your damage in single. But unfortunately, we haven't gotten too much. I'm thinking, guys, maybe we should go ahead and send a Hog Rider in the left lane. And then I don't really want to Earthquake yet because I had a feeling he wasn't going to use his Goblin uh, Cage. So Musketeer here to clean up the Musk uh, to clean up the Mega Minion as well as the Ewis. And then let's go with the Mortar here, and then actually Valkyrie, because he might go, yeah, with the Cannon card, I was going to say. So he predicted that, which was really nice. And then, okay, wow, guys, interesting placement. I think we can bypass that with the Hog Rider. Yeah, we do. Um, let's Skeletons here. He goes in with Snowball, but the Hog should still get one hit anyways. I doubt it gets two, but maybe. Um, Valkyrie here to pull the Goblin Brawler. And then let's go with another Mortar, guys. Like I said, the cycle is just so fast. He might even have a golem, but he's just not really able to play it. I'm not sure. Okay, there we go, guys. Mortar locks on the tower, and it's going to get at least one shot. It might get a second if he doesn't play anything else. Uh, yeah, it does get an, end up getting a second shot, guys. He goes in with a golem in the back. Let's go in with a hog rider right away. And then let's go ahead and earthquake, because, yeah, I knew he was going to go in with the goblin cage, obviously, because that's his, like, best counter to um, the hog rider. So let's just... 
uh, pre-plant a mortar. Bats here. And then we need to spread everything out, guys, so we can't poison everything. Mortar's a great counter to the golem. Um, let's go with the hog here, like apply pressure. Because he's going on offense right now, and he might not have anything to defend this hog here. He goes in with the goblin cage, but we earthquake. So the hog might end up getting a hit. Yeah, it gets a hit. He, he went in like very, very, uh, like a kind of defensive there, and he ended up spending a lot of elixir. Ooh, actually, guys, we need to really be careful because that brawler is on our tower, and it really took our tower pretty low, to be honest. That was pretty unfortunate. Well played on his end. Let's go in with the hog rider, and let's earthquake here. It should get good value because there's, like, so much stuff down right there. Um... And then we need to go in for a Valkyrie here to counter this. And then Skeletons so the Mega Minion gets drawled back. And then, guys, we can just go ahead and send in another Mortar. And then if he goes in with a Golem, we can immediately um, send in a Hog. But he goes in with the Cannon Card. I think that was a smart play on his end. And then we need to make sure that we stop that Cannon Card. So let's Musketeer here. And then go in with a Valkyrie to pull everything back. Look at that Splash, guys, from the Valkyrie. Really, really solid. Um, let's go ahead and Earthquake here, and then go in with the Snowball. Maybe we can push back the Megmean, and the Hog ends up getting a hit. No, he goes with the Snowball. Well played. Let's go Skeletons here, a Valkyrie, and then we probably need to go in with Bats too. And then a Hog to hopefully pull everything back. Um... Skeletons, and then, yeah, there we go, guys, that was a good game. Sorry for not talking, that got really intense there, but as you guys just saw, Golem isn't too hard of a matchup, especially the variant he was running. I feel like, I don't know, that was kind of interesting, and my Earthquake was able to get value. I feel like maybe if they're running Golem E-Drag, it can be hard, but because he had the uh, Goblin Cage, we were able to get value out of the Earthquake, and also we were able to break through. He also had quite a bit of answers to the hog. Like, not only did he have the goblin cage, but he also had the Ewiz. But we were still able to break through and outcycle him. That got really close at the end, and to be honest, we did make a mistake or two uh, on the... Um, like, we let the Ewiz get a hit on our tower. That was... Um, I shouldn't have done that. All right, but, he, but guys, we're 9-0, and so we're looking pretty good here. Let's again go in with a mortar at the bridge first play of the game. See what he has. Um, okay, he just goes in with a bandit. Do we time it? Uh, no, we do not, unfortunately. But we might end up getting a hit with the mortar anyways. Uh, hopefully that bandit doesn't charge on our tower. It doesn't. Let's send a hog in. It's good to get, be pretty aggressive, guys, in single just because the deck is just so cheap. It's uh, 3.1. Let's Valkyrie here and then snowball everything back. I think that Ram Rider might uh, get... Uh, no, it won't. But he does have the Magic Archer. Pretty well played on his part. He's going to get quite a lot of chip damage. He got, I think, three hits from the Magic Archer on my tower. So that was definitely quite good value for him. Uh, I'm going to go with Bats here and then see what he does. Uh, he just lets that die so the Bandit isn't going to get to our tower. And then maybe we could go in with another Mortar or just send a Hog Rider in. I'm not sure what would be better. I think... Let's actually mortar. I think that's probably a little safer just because, like, if he goes in, yeah, because he, look at that guy, he spent eight elixir. And if I played a hog rider, he would have just spent four, so he would have had more to counter push or something. But now, guys, we can hog rider. Lumberjack's out of cycle, which is probably his best counter to the hog. Because the ram rider, of course, is uh, five elixir, so he has to kind of overspend when he wants to play that. I don't really want to play bats, guys, just because I feel like he might go in with. Um, a snowball on top of them, but I think maybe that Valk was a mistake. It might have been actually better to play bats because then the magic archer wouldn't have been able to get value like that. Again, he misplays the bandit like he, like it didn't charge, so I think that was a mistake. Let's hog here to distract the bandit, and I'm not sure he has too much elixir. He had enough to play a lumberjack, but the hog might get a second hit. No, that didn't because the bandit hit it. So let's skeletons to distract here. A well played snowball on his end. Yeah, actually, really well played. I'll give him the well played. Um, really solid prediction on his end. But let's go with the mortar here. And then now, we're, guys, we're free to play our bats because obviously he just played the snowball. So this is like an example of a game where the earthquake doesn't get too much value, but you can always use it at the end of the game, like if you need to chip their tower. Um, okay, so let's go with the Valkyrie here. And then let's just snowball everything back. And then we need to for sure go in with a mortar to distract that ram rider. 
Okay, so yeah, the mortar is not going to connect to the tower because he had the magic archer down. We need to go other lane, guys. I realize like going same lane is not working out. Plus, he has the damage lead, so let's just switch lanes. That's going to help us because going same lane is just not working out for us. Um. Okay, interesting. He plays a magic archer on those. I think that was a mistake, to be honest. I can just ignore that magic archer. Going with a Valkyrie here. And now, guys, let's go same lane again, just because, like, that magic archer was their other lane, and I just, yeah, I don't think that that was too good of, um, a magic archer on his end. Let's go in with another hog rider. We have the musketeer there to pair, that's why I didn't go other lane. And he goes in with a ram rider. So the hog should get one hit, possibly. Maybe not. Uh, a, wow, really good, uh, magic archer placement. Unfortunately, that ram rider was kind of um stunning the valkyrie so the magic archer stayed in kind of like place for that to to get a lot of damage on my tower let's go with a mortar here wow guys you know what's kind of crazy he got like almost all of his damage with the magic archer like he he hasn't really gotten any damage with the ram rider i like he gotten like basically all of it with the magic archer and that's gonna be yeah good game honestly like he just needs one more magic archer hit and then it's over um i'm not really sure like what this matchup is because i haven't really played it a lot but um i think for sure he played really well i'm not sure like what i could have done differently to be honest Again, like, I'm not sure. I just haven't played this matchup much. I think, like, the Magic Archer is just, like, really hard for us to deal with. Like, I, I'm really not sure. Like, yeah, we'll give him a good game. I mean, we just haven't really done any damage at all to him. I feel like, first of all, the Lumberjack is just a solid counter of the Hog. And then also the Ram Rider can pretty much deny all damage. So, like, we can't really ever get kind of a hog on his tower and break through maybe i should have switched lanes a little more i probably could have gone right lane more often every time i played a hog but i just thought it would have been better to uh yeah i don't know i just thought maybe it would be better to go same lane as him to like defend and attack at the same time but maybe it just would have been better and i also didn't really feel comfortable playing a mortar in the right lane either because then if i did that then he could just ram rider obviously so i wasn't really yeah sure how to play that differently but maybe that just wasn't too good of a matchup for us because of his magic archer but i'm not really too sure okay so again here guys we have the mortar to start off uh like again so let's just play mortar at the bridge first play of the game uh and then see kind of what he has so he has pekka so Pekka is not too hard of a matchup, guys. Even though you, you can't really use your Earthquake on, like, the building, you can still, um, uh, like, use it effectively to, like, allow your Hog to get a hit because it slows down stuff. Let's go with a Musketeer here. I'm not sure we'll even need a player of Valkyrie unless he, like, Lightnings or something. Yeah, he doesn't, so Musketeer can clean everything up. And then let's go ahead and play a Valkyrie. And then, honestly, let's go in with the Hog Rider. The reason why I'm being so aggressive is because he went in with a P.E.K.K.A., so I know he doesn't have a lot of Elixir. And look at that, guys. He went in with Snowball on the on the Hog Rider. I don't think he has it. I think we take Tower here, guys, because he just used his Snowball. He didn't have enough Elixir to play Baby Dragon. His P.E.K.K.A. was out of cycle. So, guys, that's, like, all about identifying, like, what your opponent did. I personally think when he went in with a P.E.K.K.A., on the mortar first play maybe that wasn't too good of a play on his end because he spent seven elixir on a four elixir mortar and then we were just able to easily out cycle his pekka so then he didn't have it when we played the hog rider and also that snowball was for sure a mistake in my opinion maybe he just didn't know that we had bats but right there we really took advantage of of him being low on elixir and just out cycling him to be honest so i'm curious if he has lightning or not let's um yeah he does so let's valkyrie skeletons and then we need to play bats on top of the baby dragon and hopefully we can stop this here our cycle isn't the best but we should be able to save our tower and also not take an awful lot of damage i mean uh yeah i, I just wasn't sure if he had lightning or not but now that i know he has lightning we just space our stuff out and then we should be fine and honestly like we just need to play defensive mortars for the rest of the game and then this should be pretty much good game i just need to be really uh 
kind of careful about where I place my, my stuff. Let's actually send a Hog Rider on the King Tower. Like, normally you don't want to go for the three, but I kind of just want to apply some pressure because I don't want to cycle everything into the right lane because then it gets kind of awkward. Uh, let's go with a Valkyrie here and then a Snowball. I really want to get rid of that Ewiz, and he goes in with a Lightning. Pretty well played Lightning on his end. He's not going to take Tower, though, I don't think. Let's snowball, and then we should, yeah, this should be a good game. Let's just mortar far away from our tower, and then even if you lightnings, we have bats, we have skeletons, we have a lot of stuff, and lightning, guys, does not do enough damage to take towers, so this should be game. There you go, guys. That was a pretty good game. It got pretty close at the end. I honestly thought there was a high chance he would, uh take my tower but we were able to like defend and honestly the defense was a little sloppy on my end um it, uh at a couple points like i probably should have when i played a valkyrie for example i distract the baby dragon and then play skeletons on the pekka so then the skeletons distract the pekka so then the valkyrie is able to hit it so then because the valkyrie has more range than the skeletons so it'll stay alive because in that circumstance you want the Valkyrie to stay alive just because it just does way more DPS than the skeletons do. So that was a small mistake on my end, but we still like walked away with the wind, so it doesn't really matter. So we don't have mortar or hog to start the game off, which is kind of unfortunate. So if he doesn't do anything, we're just gonna need to cycle a snowball. And then split bats. Yeah, he's still not doing anything. It makes me think he's probably running a golem deck. So let's go ahead and mortar right now after splitting the bats. So then we just have the bats there like tanking for the mortar and there's the baby dragon so guys this i think is probably a golem deck just because you oh okay so he has a lava hound so it's not as i thought but look at that guys the musketeers hitting the baby dragon so that's really good for us and he goes in with a clone so um clone guys uh lava clone can be a little annoying but i don't think it's like an impossible matchup or anything look at that guys we waited a snowball just for the cloned lava hound to pop because if i snowballed before it would have been really really hard to defend the clone lava pups he goes in with the snowball kind of interesting i'm thinking of doing this guys let's go with the hog rider bats and then earthquake like kind of a there we go guys that's why i did that like a prediction on his skarmy because he had his snowball out of cycle so I knew that he wouldn't be able to snowball the bats. And then also, like, I just, for whatever reason, I assumed that he wasn't going to go for a Lumberjack. He instead would go into the Skarmie. Just because, like, the Skarmie is a little cheaper. We kind of messed, messed up, guys, on the kite. I was trying to kite the baby dragon into the other lane, but that didn't really work. So let's just mortar here. To, uh, try to take his tower and then defend for the rest of the game. We got to keep in mind, Snowball is our best answer to his clone. We don't have any other spell because Earthquake, guys, of course, doesn't hit air. So we need to be really careful about that. And I think we can use our Valk to tank. And then if he goes in with... Uh, let's snowball this. Like, I know, guys, like, we need to save the snowball for the clone. But I feel like right there in that situation, I really just had to go in for the snowball there. Hopefully we can defend here. I don't know if we can, though, because he just went in with the clone. Um... It's gonna be kind of close, actually. Yeah, we do end up defending, but the only problem this is yeah he it's just a snowball but since he just snowballed let's go with a valkyrie uh ram rider like or not ram rider excuse me hog rider and then going for prediction snowball uh just because i thought he was gonna play a skarmy but interesting he went in with a clone instead so he's pretty low on elixir again let's go in with another valkyrie hog rider but instead of playing bats uh let's go in with an earthquake now uh just because i thought maybe he was gonna go in with his skarmy he didn't though Hopefully he doesn't go like with a Lava Hound in the middle or something like that. Nah, he doesn't. He goes in with a Lumberjack at the bridge. We should just be able to stop that, uh, hopefully. Um, ooh, we just barely stopped it, guys. That was kind of um, unfortunate. Let's Valkyrie here to tank and save that Musketeer. And then we need to go in with a Hog Rider here. We kind of need to be pretty aggressive. Let's Snowball the Bats. And then, honestly, let's Earthquake here. Hopefully we predict we predicted the Skarmie. Hog just needs to get one more hit. Wow, guys, we won the game. Wow, that was such a close game. Honestly, a Lava Clone, in my opinion, is a pretty tough matchup for this deck because you only have Snowball as your basically only counter the clone. So I think we played that really, really well. It was a close game. 
And honestly, what won us the game is the predictions. Like, we went in with two prediction earthquakes on top of the Starmie. A uh, couple, like, that's why, guys, it's always good to just go in with the earthquake, even if you're not, like, even if they don't have a building. Like, it's just so good against, in that matchup, the Starmie. And even if he played the Lumberjack, like, it would slow it down so the Hog gets an extra hit in some circumstances. So now we just need one more win uh, to get the 12. Hopefully we can get it. I just really, um... Just, I love this deck, guys. It's just so fun, and it's and it's great for you guys, too, uh, who are free to play, as I said earlier, because it has no legendary or epic cards in the whole deck, so... And then you can just trade Earthquakes to max that. And it's just, in this meta, a lot better than 2.6, because uh, 2.6, I just feel like... Uh, I don't know, like, it, it has a really hard time to get in cer against certain matchups. I'm not really sure which one's on the top of my head, but this one does better against Mortar decks. Uh, it actually counters 2.62 because of the, you have the Earthquake for the Cannon, and it does better against RG Lightning because you have the Earthquake for the Furnace, and then I'd even say it does slightly better against Air decks as well because you have the Bats, so you have an extra counter to Air Counters, as you saw in the Lava Clone game. What was, but was kind of interesting though is I didn't really use my bats much to counter his air troops. I mostly used it on offense to pair up with the hog rider. Hopefully we can find a game here, guys. Uh, we found our other games pretty quickly, but sometimes when you get to 11 wins, it can take even two minutes to find a game. Sometimes just because, uh, like the the more wins you get, uh, in lots of cases, the longer it takes to find a game. But maybe while we wait, I'll talk like a little bit more about matchups that I can think of. Uh, we already played a golem game. What did we not really verse yet? We just versed Lava Clone. We haven't played, um, okay, well, never mind. We found a game. Oh, mirror matchup. So, guys, I have a replay of a mirror matchup. Maybe I'll show you guys this after I get the 12 wins, just how I would, like, play a mirror matchup, or I could talk about it a little bit. So, let's split skeletons in the back, and then we can just go with a hog rider. So, he's not playing anything. Maybe he's running a pretty expensive deck. He goes with a mega minion. So that hog it should get two hits because Mega Minion isn't like the best. Oh, I would actually got a third hit. That's kind of unfortunate for him that the, that that interaction didn't really work out. So I was gonna go with an offensive mortar, but let's uh, let's actually just Valkyrie. I'm playing. I want to play it really safe here. So Fireball, Musketeer, Mega Minion. I think ooh, I missed time the Valkyrie, but I don't think it's gonna matter too much because it's still gonna take it out. Let's go with a Mortar here. He did just use, like, a Fireball, so he... Okay, so this is going to be a Giant deck. Um, Giant... I don't really know, like, uh, exactly, like, what this matchup is. I haven't played against many Giant decks, but what's really good is, is you can easily outcycle them, for the most part, because uh, you, you have such a cheap deck. But what's interesting is he actually has Ice Spirit, so maybe it'll be a little harder to outcycle. Let's go with the Hog Rider here. I just kind of want to see if he has a Prince or what his, um, like, or what his Hog Counter is. So it looks like it's the Mini P.E.K.K.A. And that's really good because we can Snowball it. The Prince, like, if you guys know, like, the Snowball doesn't push it back. But since he has the Mini P.E.K.K.A., we can Snowball that back in almost all circumstances get a Hog hit. So to be honest, this is already looking really solid for us. I think we probably do have matchup, to be honest, especially since he doesn't have the Prince. So the, so the hog should, like, always get a hit. Um, because he can't really, uh, like, prevent the mini pack from being pushed back if I always snowball it. So let's go with the musketeer here. He goes in with a giant. Kind of interesting placement because the mega minion, I think, goes in front. Uh, let's hog rider here. Uh, we kind of just played a hog into the mini pekka. That was a bit unfortunate. Let's go with skeletons here to distract. And look at that, guys. Like, he zapped the bats, uh, but the skeletons, like, were not zapped, so that was good. Let's go with a hog, I mean, a musketeer here. And then let's just again go with a uh, defensive mortar. We just want to play it safe, no offensive mortars, just because, like, we want to make sure we're not taking any chances. Let's Valkyrie here. And then he's going to save his mini P.E.K.K.A. most likely for the hog. Let's go with the hog, though. And then if he mini Pekka's snowball it, and as I said, guys, like, that'll always allow the Hawk to get a hit. It ended up getting two hits. That puts it in Earthquake range. We can go ahead and Earthquake, Mortar to pull the Giant away. I don't think it's going to matter, though, guys, because there's five seconds left 
and that's gonna be a good game. So that was a really, really good game to to be honest. Like great game to end on. Uh, giant guys, um, lots of giant decks uh, counter mortar decks, but this specific mortar deck, I personally don't even think giant has matchup against because you don't have like a lot of uh, beta elements to give their spell value on. Like they of course have zap for the bats and they can like log skeletons or fireball zap the musketeer. But then if they do that, you can play bats. So they can't really even fireball zap the musketeer. Uh, they, they're very limited on how they can use their spells, and since you can always outcycle them, because the deck is, oh, it's actually 3.0, I think I said the deck was 3.1, it's actually 3.0, so that was, um, my mistake, because I, th I think I said a couple times in the video it was 3.1, but 3.0, that's even cheaper, so that's you know, why you can outcycle basically everything. So let's go ahead and open the chest, hopefully we get a legendary, and then I'll show you guys the, um, the replay of how to play a mirror matchup just because this deck is used quite a and there we go guys we get the legendary unfortunately there are lots of bombers bombers aren't really that good but i guess it's fine because i don't have the max so let's uh hope we get i really want to get a uh that's not really what i wanted but that's fine i was hoping maybe for a ram rider because i i like using ram rider decks but let me take a look guys and see if i have so that's the only matchup we've lost guys um, I'm not, again, I'm not entirely sure what, uh, that, like, the matchup is. Maybe, like, he just played really, really well. I'm not really too sure. He got tons of damage with the Magic Archer. Uh, and there we go. We beat Golem. I'm looking for the mirror matchup. Here it is, guys. Uh, I, let's just watch it real quick on two times speed, just because... Uh, it would be good for you guys to know how to play mirror matchup. So generally, in a mirror matchup, you want to be really aggressive. Uh, and also don't use your mortar a lot. That's another thing guys because the earthquake just kind of wrecks the mortar So generally how I like to play the matchup is not using the mortar. So now that I know he has earthquake And it's a mirror matchup. I think from this point on I don't really use any more mortars I can't remember what you can also do if you really want to is you can play a mortar opposite lane to split their earthquake damage That's another thing and look at that guys. I missed the earthquake right there um, That was just kind of like a bad bad placement on my part but like you'll look here guys like watch watch what i do instead of playing defensive mortars i often use my valkyrie bats snowball and other stuff to defend the hog rider so that way i don't give him earthquake value and then it's also really important to be really aggressive uh right there look at that guys like i earthquake the tower the mortar and force him to play a musketeer and then look at this guys like i said again uh, like I don't use my mortar. I instead use musketeer and bats, but he did get a lot of damage here But I do make a comeback because guys I think his mistake is is he's using the mortar and that's just giving me free earthquake on his tower Mortar, etc. And look at this guys like once again. I don't use the mortar I prevent the hog from getting a single hit and also guys not using the mortar Another thing that that does in the mirror matchup is it actually allows you to cycle faster because if you're using your skeletons and snowball to defend the mortar you can cycle back to another hog pretty quickly and look at that guys we're continuing to chip him out uh, i again just don't use really any mortars and i prediction earthquake because i know he's gonna go in with a mortar which is kind of a mistake on his end and also notice how i'm like yeah just really being aggressive that's the, just the way you want to play it this matchup just being aggressive. I, of course, I don't think I played this matchup perfectly. This guy was a good player, too. He, he actually has 20 wins on his profile. I, again, missed an Earthquake here. Uh, so, like I said, I didn't really play perfectly. But you guys get the general idea of not using Mortars. Because, to be honest, he uh, played really well and almost won. But the only difference between the way I played and the way he played was just that I didn't really use Mortars. Um, I did, yeah, make a couple mistakes with the Earthquake where I didn't end up hitting the Mortar and his tower. That was just the, the two misclicks on my end. And had those not happened, the game probably wouldn't have been as close because I think one or, one or two of those Mortars, they got a hit or something. So that kind of, uh, like, was kind of a factor to it being close. But yeah, uh, like I said, it was a good player, 21 player. So yeah, it, like a mirror matchup, just, I, I just like to play it really aggressive. Um... And then defend, just remember, def defend with your Valkyrie and the Snowball. Those are probably the things that uh, I'd keep in mind in a mirror matchup. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, I have like a really, like really exciting news. Next video, 
I'm actually going to be posting a Pro vs. Pro. This is probably going to be tomorrow, maybe the day after, but it'll be next video. I'm doing a Pro vs. Pro vs. Jack. I forgot if I already mentioned that to you guys. He agreed to do that. So that's going to be out probably, yeah, tomorrow, the day after. And I hope it's a really close best of five. I mean, he's an amazing player. He played, a, I'm sure you all know, he played CRL Asia. And also, he finished number one with 2.6, I think, two or three times. So he's just uh, honestly a beast. Um, I'm a little nervous, not going to lie, because just he's amazing. But I'm going to play my best. I'm sure he's going to play his best, too. And yeah, we'll see what happens when we play a best of five. But if you guys like this video, make sure to like it and uh, subscribe if you're not already subscribed. And also comment below what you guys want to see uh, in future videos. And thanks again until next time, guys.